Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Burning Ice Tech channel where we learn something new every day. So this is going to be episode one of the Microsoft MS700 series, also known as Managing Microsoft Teams. Each episode is going to be covering a different aspect or a different topic of this course. So if your intention is perhaps to go and write the Microsoft MS700 exam, this series should prepare you fairly well for your exam since we're going to be covering most of the topics in the exam and most of the topics that's actually in the course. So stay tuned. Welcome. Today, we're not going to be covering a lot of practical. It's mostly going to be theory. But in some of the other episodes, starting from episode two, there's bound to be a lot of practical involved, theory and practical. Some people learn better by theory or seeing things. Some people learn better by doing things practically, obviously. So today, getting started with Microsoft Teams. So if you have nothing at the moment in your company or you currently are using something else, you are probably wondering, where should I start what do I need to do first to get teams in my environment? And that's a good question to go and ask yourself. And that's pretty much what this course or this episode is going to be covering today. Where do I start with Microsoft Teams? So here are a bunch of questions you can start by asking yourself. Are you currently using something else in your company? For example, Skype for Business. If you're currently using Skype for Business, which is the one before Teams, you know, before Skype for Business, we even had Link. So if you're currently using Skype for Business, how do you get to start using Teams? Or what if you're using something else, something third party, maybe you're using Zoom, maybe you're using something else, or maybe there's nothing. So regardless of what your situation is, how do you get yourself to a situation where you end up using Teams to its full extent? That's ideally where you want to end up, right? So let's assume you've got Skype for business. Now, one way to get to Teams is to go and do a migration, and that's generally what most companies will go and look at they will do a form of migration. Now, the reason I'm saying a form of migration is because you can go migrate from Skype for Business to Teams in various ways. You can just go and boom, bam, switch to Teams in one go. In other words, one day you were using completely just Skype for Business, and the next day you're literally just using Teams. That's it. Now, that's a bad idea for most companies because generally people don't respond very well to a sudden change. So I would advise against that. I mean, granted, there are companies out there where this might actually work. Maybe you could pull this off. But it's still a very high risk to go and take. Remember, who are these users going to be contacting? It's 10 to 1 going to be you or your department in the IT section. So that is not a situation you want to find yourself in. It's going to be quite a big pickle. So let's try and avoid that as best as we can. It's completely random for each company. You know, Obviously, each company has got their own requirements and their own needs. Each company is unique. So it's got nothing to do with the size of the company. It's got nothing to do with the age of your people, you know, whether they're young or old. Although I've seen generally younger people respond better to sudden change than, than their older folks. The older folks are normally more stuck in their ways. You know, they're stuck in their comfort zone. This is obviously not applicable to everybody. Only you yourself would know your users best. So I cannot tell you what to go and do and what not to go and do because only you would know in your unique circumstances. I can give you pointers though and advice. So starting with Skype for Business, I would say rather do a gradual migration from Skype for Business to Teams. There's about five options you can go and choose. So later on, we're going to be discussing migration in depth. But if you were to go to the Teams admin portal, specifically under the organizational wide settings, you'll find there's an upgrade section. And when you go to the upgrade section, there's generally a drop down list of about five options to go and choose when it comes to migration. Now, my personal favorite is the one that says islands, which means you're using Skype for Business to its full extent and using Teams to its full extent, both parallel to one another, full functionality, both of them at the same time. Now, that's my personal favorite because I found that that works best with most users. Doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Only you would know what's going to work for you. So a second question to go and ask yourself is, are your staff ready for the change? So obviously you're going to have to go and upskill your staff a little bit, you know. I'm not saying they have to do advanced training like you're doing most likely. Just basic pointers of what Teams actually is, what they can go and do on Teams, and how they would go about actually doing these tasks. This could be tasks that they're, that they're already doing maybe on Skype for Business. So if your company is using Skype for Business and your users are currently, you know, doing calls, meetings, and all kinds of tasks like that, it could be just a matter of showing them how they do these tasks now on Teams. You know, people don't like a sudden change, like I've said earlier. So maybe perhaps invite them to a room of some sort. This could even be your company's boardroom. Just remember to keep social distancing because of these COVID-19 times. 
invite them to the boardroom, have a projector up and running, perhaps show your users, hey guys, this is what we're going to be using from now on. We're not going to take your scrap business away immediately. We're going to maybe give you a month for two months, you know, depending on your company. So we're not going to take it away completely, but there is this new product called Teams. This is what we would like you guys to start using. So when you've got free time, please have a look at it. Try and do your calls via this. Try and schedule meetings on Teams. Do your collaboration on Teams. These are basically tasks that we would like you to go and do. So just show your people what you would like them to go and do. Show them the product, do like a small little tour. Show them how to do a meeting, how to do a call, how to do a private chat. All the day-to-day -day tasks they would normally go and do. After showing this, I've generally found that the average person is a lot more comfortable with the change and they feel a lot more confident with it. So this is definitely something to keep in mind. Maybe you go and use it or don't. It's really up to you at the end of the day. Lastly, is your network ready? Now, generally when I see Microsoft asking things like this, this could actually mean anything, but I'm going to take a guess here and say it probably means your bandwidth. At least that's one of the main things you should probably go and look at. Now, your bandwidth, for those of you that don't know, that's your internet speed that you've got available. Your total amount of megabytes, most likely. So I'm going to use a round number here. Let's pretend your company's got a 100 meg fiber line. Now, generally, a 100 meg fiber line is a pretty decent, fast, stable internet connection. But there's variables you need to take into account here. How many users do you currently have in your company that is sharing that 100 meg line? So if it's only 10 people or 20 people even, that 100 megs should be fairly decent. But if you start looking at 100 people, 200 people, maybe even 1,000 people, very quickly that 100 meg line is going to become extremely slow to the point where it's basically rendered useless. Not a situation you want to find yourself in. So you need to take into account how many people do you actually have in your company. Never mind how many people you have, what are they actually doing that's consuming internet? Are they just using Teams? Are they perhaps pulling email? Almost all people use email. Are they using the internet for something else? Or are some of them doing downloads? All of these are questions you need to go and ask yourself and things you need to go and look at at your environment. So these are variables you're going to have to take into consideration at the end of the day when it comes to is your network ready. It could also be something totally random. Maybe like your company's internal switches. The switches where you connect your actual network cables, which is referred to those as Ethernet cables or LAN cables. Some people just call them Cat5 or Cat6, depending on what speed your company is using. So... Here I've got a nice little picture for you guys, which basically shows you the design and layout of an actual team inside of Teams. So for those of you who don't know, that's why Teams has its name. It's because in Teams, unlike Skype for Business, you can actually go and create this cool function called Team. It's an actual team you create inside of Teams. So if I have to take a guess, that's probably why Microsoft called it Teams. Now here they've used pretty much general names. So my team is actually called Team 1. You can actually call this whatever you want. And once you go and make yourself a team inside of Teams, automatically it's going to create what they call a channel. The first channel, which is one you cannot go and change, is called the general channel. So you'll see directly below Team 1 there, we've got a general channel. That is a channel you cannot go and unfavorite, you cannot go and delete it, and for the most part, you cannot go and change it. So since we're kind of stuck with that channel, you might as well use it. So the average company will normally go and use this as a landing page, a lobby, Maybe you can go and post something that's relevant to everybody. So maybe it's like a project charter, uh, company rules, terms and conditions, policies, dress code. It could literally be anything. Basically anything that's applicable to everybody currently in this team, that's what you'll go and post in the general channel. Now, after the general channel, you can go and add additional channels. You don't have to. You could just use the general channel alone if you really want to. Nobody does that, but hey, there's a first time for everything. Or you can go and add a bunch of extra channels. Now, in this little picture, you can see there's currently two channels added, channel 1 and channel 2, respectively. Now, how many channels you add is completely up to you. What you call them is completely up to you, and what you use them for is completely up to you. Now, Microsoft has given quite a few ideas, ideas as to why you would want to go and use these channels. It could be that Team 1 is maybe a team for the whole company. Maybe I created Team 1 and I've given it the name of the company. You can call it whatever you want. Channel, general channel is maybe just going to be my rules and regulations and stuff for the company. Maybe general stuff like the leave forms and stuff like that. Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. Each of these channels might be different departments in my company. Maybe channel 1 is the sales department. Channel 2 will be the marketing department. Channel 3 will be the IT department and so on and so forth. So the reason why you create a team 
how you design it and all of that and how you use it, that's completely up to you. It's only limited by your imagination at the end of the day. I have to suck something out of my thumb here. So another reason why you might want to go and use a team is for a project. That's actually a suggestion given by Microsoft. So I can go and create a team and the name of this team could be the name of the project. It's probably going to have an end of life most likely. And each channel could be a different aspect of this project. So depending on what department I'm in or what aspect of this project I'm working on, that's the channel I'm going to be in. So I can go and limit people from a different aspect in a certain channel. Or if this is a company, each channel is a different department, I can have all the people in that specific department work in that specific channel. So if I'm in the HR department, channel one might be the HR department, and I'm going to be, for the most part, just in channel one. So if I would like to share information amongst fellow HR colleagues, I'm going to probably go and post it there. If I need to ask a question from my HR colleagues, I'm going to go and post it there. If I need a file or a document, or if I need to go and upload something or share something, if I need an application or an app of some kind, which is only relevant to the HR department, I'm going to also go and put it there in that specific channel. So that's pretty much what this is all about. I'm going to take a moment here and show you guys what this actually would have looked like on the actual um, portal from that side. All right, so here we are actually in the Teams client. Now, later on in some of the other episodes, we're going to be covering the various kinds of clients we get. So for those of you that don't know, the client is actually, how do I actually use Teams? This could be you installing Teams locally onto your desktop or your laptop. It could be you going into the Play Store if you're using Android or some sort of other store to just go download Teams for mobile devices like phones and tablets. Or it could just be you going onto the 365 portal and just clicking on Teams there, the software as a service version. So to show those of you that don't know what software as a service is, this is the normal 365 portal. It's not any specific admin portal. So what you see on this portal really depends on what role you have in the company and what privilege you obviously have. So at the moment, I think I am an administrator on this, on this account. And at the moment, you'll find here at the bottom left, I actually even have a gray admin tile. So that leads me to believe I've got some sort of admin privileges. Most likely, I'm a global admin, for those of you that know what a global admin is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this one. I've actually already opened it on a different tab there. When I click on that, that's actually going to open Teams in a web browser. So that's an example of software as a service, which means this is installed somewhere else. It's running somewhere else. It's just displaying to my PC. It's being rendered back to me as a service, software as a service. So that's what they mean by software as a service. It's not installed locally on my device or my machine. It's installed somewhere else. It's running somewhere else. It's being rendered back to me as a service for a monthly fee or for a yearly fee. So what do you've got? This is a service depends on what role you have. It depends on your license. It depends on whether your administrator has actually allowed you access to Teams. There's a whole bunch of things you need to take into account here. So what I basically did here is I've actually already clicked on Teams there. At the top, I've got a tab open here where I've already clicked on that. There's my software as a service version of Teams. Now here I went ahead and created myself a team already. I've called it Burning Ice Tech, the same as my YouTube channel. And as soon as I created that team, it automatically went and created this channel called The General Channel. Now after that, I went and manually added three extra channels here. IT, marketing, sales. I could have probably added more if I wanted to, but this I think is going to probably meet my needs. It's worth noting that these channels are normally al ordered um, alphabetically or organized alphabetically. And it does not necessarily, from my experience, I've seen it does not necessarily show you all your channels. Now, at the moment, it's showing me all my channels because there isn't really that many. I mean, let's, let's face it, there's only three of them. But I've seen from experience in the past that if I've got a lot of channels here, it'll only show you the first three or the first five or something like that. And obviously, it's only going to be in alphabetical order. You still need to go and choose how many channels you want to show. You get to choose that in your options. That's going to be in a different episode. And you get to choose which ones so i get to choose how many which ones and to whom it gets presented how you know does it get presented differently to the owners does it get presented differently to the members those are the different kinds of roles you get in teams for those of you that don't know so yeah that's what it actually looks like practically there's a team there's the general channel which i cannot go and change and there's just customized channels and each channel this is the default this is pretty much what it would look like you can go and post posts here so I can go and post a conversation here. It says, hello world. Whoops, my bad. Hello world. So that conversation is now in the general channel. 
anyone and everyone that's currently got access to the general channel, and normally with the general channel that actually is everybody, they would see this. So this is kind of like a group conversation. It's not a private conversation. I can go to files and I can go and upload files here. I can download files here. At the moment, we've got nothing here. And then we've got the wiki. This is as default as it gets. Later on in some of the other episodes, you're going to see us adding connectors, bots, and applications. Now, these at the top obviously are tabs. They look like tabs. They are tabs. But Microsoft sometimes refers to these not just as tabs, but they also sometimes refer to as apps. And I'll be honest with you guys, that actually confused me for a long time until I realized that most of the time they actually are apps. It's because when you go here to the little plus sign, that's not the only way to do it. You can actually go and add any amount of apps. Most of them are Microsoft, but you also get to add a lot of third-party apps. Microsoft doesn't like it very much when I mention things that's not Microsoft. So yeah, it's your choice what you want to go and add. I personally find that's amazing. Now, should you go and add one of these apps, it's worth noting that some of them might have additional licensing um, involved. So just check it out. Do your research first before you just go and randomly add an app that you like. Go and check it out. Once you've added that app, that app is going to be only on that channel which you've added it. So if I go and add an app to the IT channel here, only the people in that specific channel, and obviously in this case it's going to be IT people, only they would have actually have access to that app that's now here at the top. It's going to basically show as an additional tab for those of you that's wondering. More on that later in other episodes in this series. All right, so here we cover the different kinds of clients we get. We get the web client, which is the one I've just showed to you guys. So in a nutshell, how do I access the Teams function as a user? So it doesn't really matter if you're an administrator or not. We all need to use Teams at some point in time. The one I showed to you guys right now was the web client. Now, from what I've seen, the desktop client, which you install locally on your desktop or your laptop, and the web client, they pretty much look identical. There's pretty much no difference between these two. The mobile client, however, from what I've seen, this could be just me, but from what I've seen personally, the mobile client is not identical to the desktop and a web client. So desktop and web client, they look pretty much identical. They work identical, same functionality. Mobile client, not so much. I mean, if I have to suck it out of my thumb, I would say the mobile client's about 60 to 70% the same as the other ones. Uh, the change is of such nature that you can actually figure out what you're looking for in a matter of seconds. And it has to be. I mean, if you think about it, if this is not user-friendly in such a way that I can figure out in a matter of seconds, I'm probably going to stop using it. And if I stop using it, that's bad for business, especially, you know, from a Microsoft perspective. So ideally, they probably want us to use this product. So it's bound to be user-friendly. It's bound to be very easy to figure out. And even if you're not tech savvy, you can figure out the client, whether we're talking about the mobile client or the desktop client or the web client, you should be able to figure out in a matter of seconds. All it takes is just for you to go and open the application and just explore. It all starts by just exploring. Alrighty guys, that is all for episode one for today. If you've enjoyed this video and if you feel that it has helped you, please consider giving the video a like and maybe if I'm lucky, I might even have earned your subscription. This is only episode one and there's definitely going to be more episodes for this series. In the future, there's also going to be episodes for other series, MS 500, just to mention a few. So please consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye guys.